What up, y'all? <laughs> What's up, everybody? It's DTLF and Yessi. What up, what up? Coming to you guys with another late night weekend edition. And we were just, mm-hmm. listen, we were just treated to something really special because uh, I believe we just saw the greatest MMA event of all time. It was fire. My goodness. Ladies and gentlemen, that MMA, oh, if you guys didn't see UFC 300, you missed out. <laughs> People are already talking. Uh, I'm gonna show you guys a little glimpse. We're gonna show you guys a little, mm-hmm. a little something of what we saw. But yep. let's start off with uh, talking about the card here, man. It was insane from the early preliminaries. What up, y'all? Welcome from the early pre- preliminaries, guys. You don't get fights like these on the preliminaries. We got Davidson Figueroa versus uh, Cody. Uh, what's his name? Uh, Garbrandt. <laughs> I always struggle with people's names, but Cody G. Yeah, <laughs> Co- Cody G is what we're gonna call him. And that was, I mean, that was pretty much, uh, you know, dominant. But yeah, the, uh, this UFC was insane, and of course we got to talk about the main knockout of the night. You guys see him on the thumbnail, man. My guy Max Holloway versus Justin mm-hmm. Gagey. Yo, Crazy. that fight right there is gonna go down in MMA history. Matter of fact, I have the ending of it. Right, I have the ending in it. Hit the fire emoji. You guys want to see the ending of it? But they don't um, want it. They don't want it. <laughs> I mean, that fight. Babe, it started with Justin Gagey getting his nose broken at the buzzer. I know. Oh, can you imagine the pain? These injuries Ooh. these MMA fighters sustain are insane. These guys are true warriors, troopers. Mm-hmm. And we're actually going to go through some gruesome injuries here in this video. But, but, man, I mean, there was two buzzer beaters in this fight. First, it was Max Holloway's reverse uh, heel kick when Justin Gagey went. I don't know why he went for a takedown or if he stumbled or what towards the end of the end of the first round. But my goodness, he said, didn't expect a banger intro like that. <laughs> Appreciate you, Christopher. Yeah, man. Yes, sir. Definitely. Uh, you know, you, you, you know, you guys definitely got to hit the like and subscribe. But let's bring up this uh, this insane finish. Listen, so let me let me for those of you that didn't watch the fight. It was this fight right here. I believe it was a it was a five rounder, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. It was a five rounder. And my guy, Max Holloway, had won the fight three to one. Right. Mm-hmm. Where they were in the final round. And. I don't know what Justin Gagey told Max Holloway, but these are two of the fiercest warriors in, in the sport. And all you see is Max Holloway point at the floor and tell him, come on, then let's brawl. Final 10 seconds. And this is what happened. Mm-hmm. What in the button? Ladies and gentlemen, right Ooh. in the button. My goodness. You ever see anything like that? That's like movie no. shit. <laughs> Yo, listen, when I tell you that my skin was, uh, you know, I had shivers running down my spine. I had like, this was the fight I was looking for. Max Holloway versus Justin Gagey. And it did not disappoint, ladies and gentlemen. It went down to the wire. Uh, and like I said, Max had the, the, the fight won. Usually what happens is fighters play it safe at that point. But this guy wanted all the smoke. And you know, you know what I mean? Like he's the Wolverine of UFC, man. He's not afraid of nobody. And he even called out Ilya Tapuria, who who's been ducking, bobbing and weaving. I don't know why the Did UFC. You see that? He looks scared. He looks the end. like he didn't want it. He's like, oh. Yes, he was absolutely terrified. He did not want the smoke from our guy. Uh, so I, I think that fight right there is gonna be just insane, y'all. But uh, if you guys did see UFC 300, what was your guys' favorite moment? Uh, I think this one's listen, <laughs> listen, man. At the very the very last fight, all right, this guy, um, this Brazilian goat, just Alex? Came, yeah, Al, yeah, Alex Pereira. Alex Pereira. He came out here, guys, and just stone hands Pereira just absolutely dominated the opposition. I knew there was gonna be. Remember what I told you? It's gonna be no contest, right? He's gonna come mm-hmm. out here yep. and put him away and early. In the first round, really, within like first like ra- minutes, yes, within first, first round. round. And sure mm-hmm. enough, that's exactly what he did, fam. And uh, like. This again, it had so many memorable moments, just to name a few, but so many good fights. Uh, the main card was insane as well. Obviously, um, there was a surprising decision with Charles Oliveira. You know, he he got um 
You know, he lost to Armand, and uh, I really thought Charles was going to dominate that fight. It looked like it early on, but the grapple game by Armand and the ability to stay close was insane, y'all. And then the uh, the Zhang versus Yan fight at the end where uh, Yan, she was tapped out, and she basically got knocked out cold, right? Like, But it was at the buzzer, and basically her team woke her up, and she kept fighting, mm -hmm. and uh, Zhang ended up winning, but... But again, Alex Pereira dominating at the end. This to me is got to be the most, uh, you know, memorable card. But talking about memorable, me and my girl were talking about this and and uh, <laughs> about injuries in MMA. Injuries in MMA. <laughs> what are some injuries you remember the some well insanely. Well, you, do you guys remember injuries. the Anderson Silva leg kick check? No. You guys remember <laughs> that? That is one of the worst we've ever seen matter of fact you know what i feel like pulling it up all right now i will warn you guys if, if listen for the faint of heart for the weak stomach turn away now okay for, <laughs> for, the, for the rest of us this is what's at risk when these fighters get between the cage okay and i want to show you guys i know there's some people that don't really watch them man on here but i want to show you why i respect these warriors check out the legendary anderson silva listen look, look what he just did right here check it out watch this he checks it Oh, oh my god! Oh, <laughs> oh my goodness! <laughs> Yo, that is insane. Is that leg right I there, fam. Really? Oh, really? Oh, and then he tried to step on it. Like, oh, um, that is one of the nastiest things you will ever see in sports. But that's why we love the sport, guys. These guys are risking all their limbs, body parts, their health, their life. And it, yeah. again, there's so many other. Uh, is there another one here? Yeah, there's another one. So right. I don't know all these fighters, but are you guys ready? I yo? came across it and I was like, oh my god! Did you guys this throw up yet? My girl told me to put this one right here. Worst injury in MMA history. I don't like the sound of that, but let's see it. Oh my god! Look at that! Look at that! Oh no! Oh, oh no! <laughs> Oh, oh, that's... That <laughs> oh my god, I was not prepared for that. Yeah, <laughs> I was not prepared not... for that, okay. ladies and gentlemen. Oh my goodness, <laughs> but I mean, you got to respect these fighters, right? Did you watch it till the end? <laughs> yeah, did I did. Away? No, I watched it till the end. Yeah, I saw his leg. That thing looked like oh my god, somebody put that uh, shit on a blender or something. Like Twix. Yeah, but <laughs> I'll tell you guys, but MMA, I mean. Who's your guys' favorite fighter? If you love UFC, I would love to know uh, SG Sports uh, Talk channel. Well, who's your favorite fighter of all time? Um, you know, obviously, John Jones is up there, man, for sure. Johnny Bone Jones is definitely one of the GOATs. Um, I used to like watching, what was the Canadian guy's name? I've completely forgot his name. Canadian guy? The Canadian fighter that sounded like Van Damme. I think they used to call him the Canadian Van Damme. Conor McGregor, Sean O'Malley. Ooh, those are good ones. I'm a big Sean O'Malley fan. Um, Dustin Proyer as well. I mean, this guy has a, a, a tremendous chin. Um, you, used, you used to like Jose Aldo? Jose, like, Jose Aldo, Aldo was amazing, yep. Uh, until that last one. Until the, the last fight, fight yeah, yeah, when he lost to Conor McGregor. But uh, Izzy, of course, Izzy, man. Izzy's oh, great. Oh, what's his name, the other guy? The, it, Izzy's great, and he likes anime as well, so, I, you know. No, there's another one. He's tough. He has a, a strong chin. They, it's I don't think he's ever gonna knock that. Um, that one guy that he's he gets he like he takes all the hits in the face. <coughs> Who are we talking about? I'm, I'm, uh, he's Hispanic, isn't he? Ah, uh, I'm trying to think. I mean, Justin Gagey was amazing tonight. He's Hispanic. Nah, well. it's another one. He has a brother too. <laughs> I think he's in, in the UFC. Brad Katana was was awesome. Uh, I'm not sure who Bam Bam is. Sounds familiar though. He said the Russian who beat the shit out of McGregor. <laughs> I used to love Nate Diaz too. Him. Nate Diaz? Yes. Yeah. I used to love, no, Nate Diaz was, you know, he, he was kind of reckless when he fought, but I like his fighting style. Definitely entertaining to watch. Yeah. yeah. Nate Diaz. Frankie Edgar is another tough one, one, another one of my favorites. Um, you know, But I, I, you know, when I first started watching MMA, my brother was a brown belt, so he was getting into Brazilian jiu-jitsu. And he would always make me watch the fights. And at first I was like, damn, this is vicious. But little by little, you kind of like, you start liking it, you know. It's, mm -hmm. it's very yeah. exhilarating. And tonight, I think, was a perfect example, man. But Gagey, I got to give him props because, you know, he is, uh, I think they said he's had a nasal surgery because he can't sleep properly. And he had to breathe through his mouth. And now he's going to need another one. Bro, going to have need to have face reconstruction surgery. Let me one. ask you, if you've gotten your bones, like your toe, your I've, hand, yeah. 
your nose, your, yeah. your jaw got dislocated, I believe. Yeah. Out of all the injuries you've sustained, which one was like the the worst, like painful, the most painful? The one? worst injury I sustained was playing football when I was a kid, getting tackled. Oh, uh, your arm. Yeah, and it got shattered, right? Like my arm broke. It, it got, and no one knew, huh? And we didn't know till like a month later. <laughs> like because I was I was a tough kid. Like literally, um, you know, I, I tried to play football that same day, right? Mm -hmm. Like as a kid. I, well, how old was I? I might have been six or seven. And I remember trying to play with my friends. I didn't want to cry in front of my friends. So nobody knew. I remember yelling. I, was. <laughs> now, I remember like somebody from my mom's church trying to raise my arm, saying it was out of place, that they were going to put it back. It was not dislocated. My shit was shattered. Well, right? no one knew, huh? But you right. said you went on days like that, right? I, I remember in that moment when he tried to lift my arm, it hurt like hell. And I would yell like crazy, right? So, no tears. So who who knew that? Like who? Did so you I, tell them afterwards? No. Like, well, what happened was that um, when I got home, my brother. Shout out to my brother Eddie. He's got insane hands. Yeah. So he's right. like, why you is your shoulder hang hands? He does have healer hands. He was <laughs> like, why is your shoulder ha hanging? Right. Uh -huh. And I'm like, I don't know. It hurts. <laughs> and he, I remember him telling me to lay down and he just like pulled my hands to, like apart, arm. my arm apart, and it snapped. He could hear the crack. And I think he popped it back into place, but it was it was fractured though. It was like really shattered. Like the bones, uh, they look like the bones look like ice. Like you ever seen an I ice? Like iceberg. Like an iceberg when when it shatters. That's yeah. what it looked like when I saw the uh the x-rays. So yeah, it, it was crazy. But for a month I didn't go to a doctor thinking, you know, it was um dislocated or no, just, thinking I was it just hurt, it, it was, was sore. Just like a minor injury, like and oh, I, I remember the doctor uh pretty much uh scolding my mom for not taking me. Uh -huh. But I, that just a testament to how tough I was. But because you kept quiet about it. Well, yeah, yeah. It. I mean, I, I thought it was not no big deal. It just hurts. I'm sore. Let me keep. I, I was going outside playing with my friends and shit for weeks. So yeah, that, that was definitely the worst injury I had. And matter of fact, it still impacts me because sometimes, like, if I throw a football really hard, my bones, my bone hurts, right? Mm -hmm. But I ignore it. You ignore it. Um, second worst injury I had actually wasn't an injury. Mm. It was when I had the uh, uh, when I went to the a dentist. Yes, I went to a dentist to. in Mexico. It wasn't a wisdom tooth. There was a, a molar, and they went oh, in there they with were doing no medicine. A root canal. Root canal. No medicine. They didn't have the an anesthesia. Right? Yeah, they claimed they got robbed the previous day, and so I needed it. It was an emergency thing because my my molar was really messed up, mm -hmm. and it was cheap over there in Mexico. And yeah. so they, and they 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 are like you're the toughest person he ever. He was performing the job on you without the medicine. Right? He performed and, the surgery without the medicine. You were like, I remember that day. You were like. I was pale, pale and sweating as well. And your mom was like, nah, we got to stop this. You know, he, he, we yeah. can't continue like this. He's going to die on me. <laughs> yeah. So we, I remember that day. He's just like, I don't know what he covered it with. It's and insane. we went back home. And then, I don't know, like after a couple of days, we had to go back, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. People still don't believe that story. I had oh, I had open mouth surgery That's with no right. anesthetics, nothing. I, I could feel them pulling the veins out of my tooth, man. I'm, I'm the real life Wolverine fan. Uh, I know, I know, right? Root canal with no meds. I, listen, I'm yeah. tough, man. I've been through a lot of pain. I didn't broke my toe. I didn't dislocated my jaw. I didn't broke my nose, uh, my arm, uh, my hand. I fractured my fourth and fifth metacarpal. Like I, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. but that's what it is when you're from the hood, man. You're tough. You gotta be tough out here in these streets to survive, you know. And I never cried. Remember when I broke when I broke my hand? I didn't cry. No, if anything, I don't think you knew you had broken your hand. Yeah, I didn't know till I looked it down. Was and my shit was, adrenaline. Uh, it was adrenaline. It was adrenaline. Yeah. Yeah. When I looked down, because I was playing basketball, and when I looked down, I see my hand was all flared up. That's how I know I broke my hand. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, y'all. It is a pain. Is is just. They be tough. Really it, tough. <laughs> it's, it's just. I mean, you, you got to do what. You, that's what, what happens. Man, Dad. that's what happens when you broke. You got. <laughs> you got to do what you got to do to survive. Um, <laughs> survive. <laughs> but let's see. Uh, let's see. Let's read a couple of questions here before we get. Listen, we're gonna review. The movie Late Night with the Devil. That shit was satanic as fuck. And we're going to get into that in a little bit. But let's read some comments first. Let's see. Mm -hmm. uh, Dan, do you think OKC can remain the number one seed? I will Put prefer to play them uh, over Denver. I think they can, but I really have no preference. Some people have made valid points about if we play Denver first when we're healthy and we have all the adrenaline LeBron's not spent, that might be our best chance of beating them. So... I concur. I think uh, no matter when we play them, if we're going to beat them, we're going to beat them. If we're not, we're not. Um, he said, did you watch uh, Sublime perform at Coachella? It was dope. The, the singers sang for Sublime and sounded just like his dad. <coughs> oh, the son. The son. Oh, the singer's son. Oh, oh no, yeah. I have not, but I love Sublime, man. I, I don't practice I, I've heard the son like years 
before i have seen yeah. a video and yeah he yeah. seems pretty good but like I, I don't know as of lately i don't know well i had a million dollars but i yeah i love it fun fact i once performed at a party i performed that song santeria my girl was there remember mm -hmm. yeah sublime yeah. is definitely one of my favorite bands of all time for sure that's when i knew I was like, <laughs> Dan is going to be my man. That's right. But no, I didn't see that performance, bro, at Coachella. I'm a, I might have to YouTube it. He said, my top five female UFC fighters of all time, Amanda Nunes. Great. She was Holly amazing. Holm, Ronda undefeated, right? Amanda Nunes was undefeated. Holly Holmes was, I mean, she got destroyed today, but yeah, she, she was good. Ronda Rousey was my girl's favorite before she got whooped. Mm, you liked um, her. She was all right. You liked her. I was the one that didn't really, I was like, yeah, she was uh. all right. Misha Tate was tough. I remember her. And Beth Correa. Yep. Yeah, that's a good list, man. Um, I don't have a top five. I think Nunez is the GOAT, hands down. Obviously, undefeated, dominated everybody, um, you know, in multiple divisions, weight divisions. Holly Holm was tough. She was definitely a career ender for, for Ronda Rousey. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, Misha Tate always gets her ass beat. but She, she tried she, doing movies. Huh? She finishes the fight. And then Ronda, to me, was always a little bit overrated, but she did put the sport on the spot because she was kind of Hollywood, you know? Yeah. She was kind of Hollywood and she, you know, she was in movies and shit. So clearly, you know, she put them on the spot. The women's, the women's division became a lot more entertaining when she uh, was dominating at first. Right. Uh, he said, Dan got the mambo mentality surgery without anesthesia. Sounds like something Kobe would do. You know mm -hmm. what? <laughs> no lie. Um, you know, the, he would, he's the only celebrity slash athlete, that I ever look up to. Well, obviously, besides Bruce Lee and Muhammad Ali, I grew up on them as well. But um but he's but, your main man. Yeah, Kobe was like the only idol I ever had when he was alive. And so I did look up to him, bro. And I would always think to myself, like, well, what would Kobe do? He wouldn't bitch or he wouldn't cry about this or that. Mm -hmm. So I would do the same. So yeah, he was a great, uh, I guess you could say a North Star for your boy. He was like a guiding light. He still is, to be honest with you, man. There's days when you wake up and you don't feel like doing your chores and you're like, Kobe wouldn't bitch about this shit. He would be up at 4 a.m. doing it. You know? For him, for six hours straight. <laughs> Mom, that's what it Putting is, in man. The work. So yeah, that, that's why I always say Kobe is more than just a basketball player. He was a way of life for sure. Um, oh man, that's on Khabib. Ner I can never say his last name, Khabib but Ner Ner <coughs> Maga Medoff. Yeah, I, I'm a big fan of his. I mean, he's retired, isn't he? Last I checked, he's retired. But I would like for him to come back and fight. Um, big fan of his. I mean, this dude was a beast. Um, so many, so many good fighters in the history of the, uh, of the MMA, man, of UFC. For me, I've always been a UFC guy, even over boxing, because because UFC, it always feels like we get insane fights, like the Max Holloway, Justin Gagey one. Of course, this was UFC 300, so I didn't want to miss it for the world, but man, it was. Um, my guy said I had a root canal with meds, and I wanted more meds. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Well, I feel you on that, but there's a flip side to that, bro. There's some people that don't feel anything when they get meds. I've had tons of teeth work done in my life, and I believe I'm one of those people because the medicine doesn't work for medicine you. doesn't always work for me. That's at least horrible. not. Yeah. So I felt I, a lot of the pains and the surgeries that they've done, like in like like when they removed the wis wisdom. Remember that night when they removed the wisdom? The meds weren't working for me, and I had a crushing headache. Oh yeah. Remember the wisdom tooth? Oh yeah. man, yeah. So I, I, you know, it felt like I was like I got PTSD. I remember that night that. you couldn't sleep at all. I had a, a crushing headache like a whole night, bro. After they removed my. But uh, didn't wisdom. you say when they pulled out the tooth, they had they actually had to break it in pieces because it was big. They, they had to break it in pieces because the gum was like covering no, a lot of. No, but your tooth was. So pull it out, big, yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Yes. Not mine. It's funny because when I went in. The doctor, he didn't. Take, little teeth. He didn't even take that long. <laughs> not even like ten minutes. But I'm saying, he like, even it. in the process, like, it was such a torture because I could feel it all. Like, I could feel them breaking the tooth, pulling out the nerves and shit. Yeah. Even with the anesthesia, you know, at least to some degree. So yeah, it, I'm, I think I'm one. I believe I have a theory that I'm one of those people that feels everything. I also remember when uh, they performed surgery on my hand. Mm -hmm. right uh that i broke uh i remember like waking up feeling that throbbing pain even though i had the uh they gave me the medicine so there's some meds that don't work for me i don't know what it is but it is what it is man we we, we move baby you're wolverine <laughs> i'm wolverine though i do heal you're fast though. what um, is your band's name you got any youtube videos of you singing in your band <clears throat> all right well my band's name was Flipside. that's actually how i met my girl she seen me perform a couple of times and uh, I was just like, you know, the I just can't remember. No, you weren't a groupie style. <laughs> <I'm just kidding. laughs> no, but she was a fan. 
Um, yeah, my band name was Flipside, and I used to sing and rap in, in the band. And, and uh, I, we were pretty good, huh? Yeah. We were pretty good. I, I was, you were like a mix of Red Hot Chili Pepper. Um, that's a big compliment. Mixed with uh, something else. I don't know. I get it like Gorillaz yeah, style. Yeah. Like yeah, yeah. Of, it was like a hip-hop singing style with alternative rock. It was really wonderful. We were making hits. And I believe if my band wouldn't have got full of themselves, we would have been in, you know, famous right now for real. And but you know everything happens for a reason. Now I'm DTLF. I was born to be a star chat, and it was only a matter of how we were going to make that happen, right? Mm -hmm. So it, destiny is destiny. You can't stop it. Now I still do music to this day, but I'm solo dolo. I, well, actually, I'm not solo dolo. I've had, I had my girl before tap in, and and, uh, and you know she's lend her vocals, uh, her wonderful vocal cords. Uh, some of you guys have heard of her before, uh, but th there will be more collaborations in the future for Just sure. Just here and there. Here and there. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, my guy said the female UFC fighters wear bikinis during weigh-ins, and the male UFC fighters wear boxers during weigh-ins. Awesome. awesome. Good to <laughs> Fun <know>. fact. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, Mario. What's up, bro? He said Dana White just announced in the post-300 press conference Conor McGregor versus Michael Chandler is set for International Fight Week pay-per-view on June 3rd, 29th. That's going to be nuts. Conor McGregor returns. Conor McGregor. <clears throat> That's going to be crazy. I'll be honest. I always hated Conor McGregor. I mean, he was entertaining as hell to watch, but I was so happy when Nate Diaz whooped his ass and then tapped him out. Like, mm -hmm. that was probably one of my favorite moments in, in MMA. Like, I remember watching that. I was so hyped. Um, but he is definitely entertaining. I can't wait for him to come back to the sport. I think it's, it's definitely needed, right? It, Do you, you think have, he's going to come back and win? Um, I don't know. Oh, he might just come back and lose. He could be rusty, but, um, yeah. yeah, Michael Chandler is no joke for sure. That's going to be a fun card to watch. And I might even recap it that day. We'll see. If we keep growing the UFC uh, fan base here, if you guys are basketball or MMA or just entertainment fans or, or late night with DTLF and Yessi fans, make sure you guys hit that like button, subscribe, and all that good stuff. Hit the post notification because we, we got a lot of content coming up, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And I think it's time. What do you think? Mm -hmm. uh, time to transition over to the uh, to the review of Late Night with Late the Night Devil. With the Devil. Uh, he said, Linkin, wait, hold on, hold on. Oh, Before wait. we do that, my guy has a crazy <laughs> question for us. Link, Linkin Park or Sublime? Shoot. Oh, that's tough. Wild. Those are two of my I favorite. would say Linkin Park. Linkin Park over Sublime? That's a coin toss for me. It depends what mood I am, because if I want some hardcore song to pump Well, yeah, me up, it does. It depends on the mood. I'm going but... Linkin Park, but if I want to chill, know, just cruise, but... it's Sublime all day if I want to chill and cruise. No, but like, just I feel like overall, you, you got to put them in, in, in their, their category where they go like Linkin Park versus Like you Linda's. had to pick one right now. Like they say you have to pick one and the other one you can no longer listen Man, to. Man, rest again. in peace, Chester Bennington. But I don't think I could live without the chill sounds of Sublime. No way. Yeah. I, I, I'm a huge Linkin Park fan. Linkin Park, though. Mike Shinoda is a big influence on my hip hop career. Like, you know, say forfeit the game before somebody else puts so you out you of the frame. So you would eliminate Sublime. I have to only because yeah, Linkin Park such an influ influence. Matter of fact, the first CD I ever got was Hybrid Theory by Linkin Park. And you know what's funny? Didn't mm -hmm. I put you onto Linkin Park? Or you already? I've heard. Oh I've yeah, heard yeah, right, yeah. Can't take credit for that. But I will say, Linkin Park was my first music inspiration. I remember I was about five years old when I got a hold of Burnt CDs and LimeWire. Who remembers LimeWire? I remember. <laughs> and I remember my neighbor saying, "I could burn you a whole CD for five bucks." And I was like. No way, because back then CDs were like 20 bucks. And, mm. you know, in the 90s, 20 bucks was a lot of money. So I remember I was like, all right, you, you know, this how, listen, I grew up in Compton and I used to sit with a, who remembers the tapes and the cassette players? I used to sit next to the radio with a blank tape and record the songs I like from the radio. So I've seen them. I used them. <laughs> li listen, I remember burning my first CD for, for five bucks from, from the homie Caesar. I used to live in the back of our apartments. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and it blew my mind. Like, that's when I got my first part of technology. And I always wanted a CD player after that. Mm -hmm. Till one day, my brother, I got good grades. And my brother bought me a, a CD player. And I had, I remember just bumping that CD all the time, man. Yeah. Probably one of the greatest CDs till now by Linkin Park yeah. Hybrid Theory. So, so that was your first CD. That was the first CD I ever listened to at the age of five years old. I remember crawling in my skin. Yeah. I mean, come on now. <laughs> There's no better intro song than, you know. Mm -hmm. I still remember it was number five too, and I remember uh, a place from my head was number nine, one of my favorite. Oh my gosh, so many good songs! All right, hey, what up, T Money? Good to see you, bro. He said, "I've been MIA. I had the worst stomach bug." Oh man, sorry to hear that, brother. Wanted to have days in bed. Ugh. I, a Ooh, lot of people were getting sick, sucks. man. Mm -hmm. Did you catch that from LeBron? <laughs> <laughs> he was sick. 
Yo, what up, Dave? What's up, brother? We were just recapping UFC. Man, we're about to get into this uh, late night with the devil review. So we want to go see it a couple nights ago. Uh, a few, like two days ago, I think. Two days ago, right? And uh, wow. So let, let's get your thoughts on the movie first. What did you think? Uh, of satanic as hell. That's right. Yeah. Uh, no, I just. Uh, yeah. It was. I don't know. I wouldn't say it, it was good, but I don't want to say it was good. You know, like I wouldn't recommend watching it. Like just all right, because, all right. you know, uh -huh. good story, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But like you were saying earlier, it was just too real because of all the rituals and stuff. All right, so, so here's here's my take. I don't want to give away too many spoilers, but Late Night with the Devil um, takes place as is a it's a, a a late night show. It, you know, it, it's like the whole movie the takes TV place in, in yeah. He wants it takes place in one spot, and it's some TV host is struggling with ratings, uh -huh. and he wants to bring them up. So you can imagine what happens through there. It's a Halloween night, right? And he's trying to bring those ratings up. So a lot of stuff happens, and uh, it's gonna be insane. Same, right? Like the, the whole listen, if you like horror creepy movies that are too close to home and extremely realistic, and they talk about the grove and they talk about all the shit that really goes on behind the scenes, this is the movie for you. Sacrifices, sacrifice, and rituals, all that. For me personally, mm -hmm. it just it felt like they were trying to make me do like be part of a ritual. You feel me? And I don't I didn't appreciate that very much because I like horror movies, but mm -hmm. that tell a good story and have good acting and have all these fun kills and all this stuff. But I do not personally like when they try to fucking hypnotize me. <laughs> you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like there was a scene where they're like, look at the screen. They showing the swirls and shit. I'm like, oh man. Like, yeah. Like, like uh, no, I'm not looking. Look away. Yeah. <laughs> so so I mean, yeah. if you like that kind of stuff, that's your cup of tea. Go for it. For me, though, I'm gonna give it an 8.5 because it had really good acting. I thought the story plot was really good up until they started doing the ritual shit, and then I was out after that. Like I just, I mentally tapped. I was like, I'm not. I don't. I don't wanna... know, but I feel like the movie, like the purpose behind the movie, is much more than just oh, going to watch a good movie. Yeah, I feel like it's a lot deeper than what people believe. Like, it, it felt sinister, fam. I was sitting yeah. there. I was sitting at the theater wondering if I made the right choice to go in there, <laughs> and I've never felt that with any horror movie. Like it really didn't scare me, and more so creeped me out. You but know those that believe in all what they so call conspiracy theories. Yeah, you know, with, you believe in that shit and sacrifices. This movie's kind of gonna gonna confirm that shit. Yeah, for you. satanic things. I mean, yeah. this movie kind of says a lot about. But that. if we're talking just about the story and it actually being a horror movie, mm -hmm. yeah, this movie would get a really high rating. You know, it's crazy. Yeah. I think you were reading some reviews, and a lot of people were saying, "Ah, oh, this is not real, but it was good though, right?" Ah, uh, it got look, it got it a really like, high rating. This movie was, but like people were yeah. saying that, oh, that, like. Like, if anybody here saw the movie without giving spoilers, we'd love to hear your review. Let's start with my guy right here. Um, he said, I'll give the movie a 10 out of 10 because I'm a fan of horror movies if I watch it. Well, go watch it first and then talk to me. <laughs> you can't give a movie a review before you watch it, my brother. You maybe, have to watch it first. Maybe he watched it. 8.5 for me. I mean, and that's high. Mm -hmm. That's high praises. Horror movies is rare when they make a great horror movie. The last great horror movie that I gave a 9 to. Mm -hmm. was um talk to me that was the last one i really like the storytelling i love the acting i love the plot i love the twist i love the whole thing this one like i said it had a strong start it even had some funny moments you know and uh, the main character is 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 very compelling like you you're interested um you know so like it, you're interested in his the thing is backstory i i i strongly believe in all of that facts so for me, yeah, there's some reality to it. So when you're watching that, you're like, what the heck? Did they really just show that? Like, no way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so uh -huh. how you how, when you watch it, you're gonna your your perception of the movie is gonna be completely different to those that don't believe in that. Other people yeah. are gonna be like, oh, it's a great people movie. People that don't you know? believe in are oblivious to the fact that weird shit goes on in Holly Weird and behind the scenes in the government doing weird shit. Like people that don't believe in that. Then you guys are just gonna say, ah, that movie wasn't scary. It was a good story, though. They might like it. They might right. say it was pretty scary, but I don't but think they're gonna. For those of us that know the truth, uh, we, we hear what Ryan Garcia spewing over there and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. You know the truth. This movie will will definitely trip you out. Like so, overall, I guess you could say it's a good movie because it's super realistic, right? It's in in a sense that yeah, the the shit they be doing behind the scenes, like this is what it looks like if you want to get to the top type shit. And you then know? you're gonna ask yourself, where do they get this idea, like? 
the idea to create a movie like that if it you know weren't real you know? <laughs> yeah i just yep, it's just, yep, I don't yep, know, yep. just crazy <laughs> um but yeah let's answer a couple of uh questions here my guy said uh next year lakers lineup ad lebron larry marketing Rui and dejante we don't have that much cap space mark i wish brother um yeah, my guy knows he said that's how the witch did me. me right at the beginning eating oh bacon. the witch that one was another one yeah yo that one that one was trippy as well that was crazy but do you remember the oh well, i'm not gonna say anything for those that haven't ah that watched. movie's old if you haven't watched it mute us now because we can talk and about a, a little movie bit of spoiler where, yeah, spoiler where alert. the witch she appears as young and she's calling in the little brother of, yeah you know the girl that yeah and he he she lures him into her little cabin. Yeah, she was a witch, and then he came out of the woods all uh, like. Yeah, that shit was creepy as fuck. <laughs> Yo, the witch was another one of those movies. You're absolutely right, T uh, Team Money. When you see like what the fuck these bitches be doing. You know what was another one that left us feeling like it's just weird afterwards when we watched it. It was Midsummer. Midsummer. Somar. Yeah. Yeah. Midsummer. Yeah, that movie was yeah that one and the other one, the one with the ladies in the roof. I always forget no, that. Oh, hereditary. Hereditary. That yeah. shit. Ugh. Those type. Those are the type <laughs> of movies that just like they're too ritualistic for me. Like, yeah, they're good in the sense that they creep you out. They do their job, but then it leaves you feeling weird. Like I got to pray or something after I watch that shit. Types, you know. So yeah, I, I just it's like you got to kind of teeter the borderline a little too much. You mm -hmm. know? Yeah. And uh, yeah, yeah, that's what this movie was, right? So if you like that type of stuff, you you like performance shit like that. <laughs> You like playing Ouija board and shit? Go watch Late Night with the Devil. It's right up your alley. For those of us that uh, don't fuck with that shit, then uh, we will pass. You know? Yeah. <laughs> that's that's the, the rating. out. That's why I give it an 8.5. Overall, good story, good acting. It's not my cup of tea. That's what I'll say. That's mm -hmm. the final review. Same. Likewise. Right? Yep. Um, let's see. My guy said, hey, Dan, what did you think of Drake's diss track on Kendrick, Future, Metro Boomin, and Rick Ross? I thought it was fire. But, you know, you can only give them halfway credit because a ghostwriter probably wrote the shit out of that. But I actually thought it was fire. I thought we got old Drake, you know, um, you know, I thought we got OG Drake before he started singing and with the gimmicks, you know. So I was like, OK, OK, Drake, we hear you, bro. I like this. I like this dissing energy, man. It's like it brings out the best of the best. I don't want these guys hugging and kissing and no ditty, all this stuff going on behind <laughs> the scenes. No ditty. I want these guys coming after each other, man, and, and really trying to claim the throne. Right. That's what I want. Hey, he said, Dan, I copped the Kobe number eight yesterday. Fire. How much did it run you, bro? Oh, hey, that's awesome, some... bro. Congrats. Mm -hmm. Congrats. I got one for my birthday a couple years back before he passed. God rest his soul. And I cherish that jersey. I rarely wear it. They try to keep it in good condition. But, mm -hmm. man, it's, yeah, man. It's, it's a blessing, bro. Why did your band break up? Oh, good Flip question. Flipside seems like a legit band name. Well, we were legit. Let me tell you something. We were recording in an expensive Hollywood studio that was charging up to like 500 bucks an hour type shit. So it was going to be a mass. Uh, it was going to be like a like really good produced couple of songs. And it just it happens that, you know, me, I'm really humble and down to earth. And I don't want to blame anybody. So I'm just going to leave it at that. Right. But let's just say that sometimes egos get in the way and people's egos flare up too much. And then, you know, that 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 can happen in a band In anything in anything. In, in a, yeah. yeah. But for me, I, I'm always a team player and I always work <clears throat> with others. It, it, you know, it, it's always other people trying to screw somebody over, you know, type stuff. So mm -hmm. you got to kind of just always watch out, man. Even the ones you think is your brothers sometimes get, uh, you know, even your brothers and sisters can sometimes turn on you. You never know. Mm -hmm. Oh my God! Help! <laughs> what are you talking about, bro? The movie, I think. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Is that my top five songs from Lincoln Park? Are "Numb," "In the End," "New Divide," "Burn It Down," and "What I've Done." I love what I've done. That's a good question. What are your top five Lincoln Park songs? Uh, think about it. I, I got. I mine. don't know. I, you know what? I like them all. They're all different. Do you remember that new album that came out? That when we first heard it, we were like, "What?" It was it's a little like bit a techno different. Al yeah. Album? yeah. At first, we were like, "I don't know." <laughs> We used to bump that every morning on the way to work. Yeah, on the way to work. And we used to wake up like at 3 a.m. Because yeah. we at first we were like, I don't know, we weren't mm -hmm. really into it. But then yeah. the more we listened to it, we're like, you know what? This what was the name of that good. album? Uh it was amazing though. Whatever it was. It I'm was... gonna look it up right now because you know what? Like um yeah. My top five favorite songs, uh, in no particular order. Uh A Place for My Head from the same hybrid theory album, Crawling. Um 
what I've done is up there for sure. Numb and the 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 fifth one, I can't remember the name is the one that's uh, the one that says, Don't turn your back on me, I won't be ignored. That's oh. probably yeah. Um yeah. That beat right there when goes. Let me see. There's paper cut. Yeah, was, one step closer. That's a banger right there. Mm -hmm. um, T Money says uh, Midsommar and Hereditary, same directors. It's not. It's not horror. It's gore porn. <laughs> I, don't <know. laughs> what? I don't know what that means. Did you find your five? No, I was looking for the album. Let's oh see. yeah, yeah. Well, we'll come back yeah. to that. Uh, he said. Plus, if you think about it, Midsommar kind of woke at the end. <laughs> yeah, bro. Yeah, there's some things in these movies is about like, like uh, what type cults, of yeah right? occults yeah it, it, it's like what type of agenda y'all trying to push man we trying to be entertaining y'all trying to fucking rape us at uh, rape our eyeball sack <laughs> <laughs> at the theaters bro he said oh yeah you're right bro i kind of lost respect for j cole when he apologized for his diss track i love j cole but don't apologize for a diss track bro <laughs> like <laughs> you know what i'm saying like you can't diss somebody yeah. and the next day say i'm sorry i'm a fan <laughs> let me get your signature None of that, right? You can't do that. He asked for his signature? <laughs> no, nah, I'm just, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm being sarcastic. Just, you know what? To be honest, I don't know what happened afterwards. I just remember. He was in his concert. I didn't, I didn't ever show the video. No. Nah. And he was basically saying he felt bad about that energy he put out. And what? Just, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. It's like don't. It's like if you're a boxer and you throw a punch and then you apologize. I'm sorry for, for hitting you, bro. Yeah, you can't do that. <laughs> oh, no. Can't do that. He said, hell yeah. We on Black or Air Force Energy all 24-24. Tomorrow is going to be a big day for us, man. And listen, the game is early on, so we, we better bring it early on. Um, Linkin Park Jay-Z collab before everybody did it. That was amazing. That that was amazing. Can I get an encore? Do you want more? Cooking raw with the Brooklyn Bo Oh, man. Don't, don't get me started on that one. He said, Burn It Down reminds me of the 2012 NBA playoffs. Isn't that the song they used for it? Yeah, man. They used it for the 2K too, no? 2K, yeah. I mean, for the 2K game. Lincoln Park was universal, man. I remember. It, it, listen, if you can get to the a album, was called sorry, the Hunting Party. The oh, the Hunting Party. You sure? Yeah, let me see. I don't I think so. That doesn't sound right. Yeah, 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 I'll tell you right now. It was right here. Um. Um. Yeah. Look. Wasn't it this? That one? wasn't that one. No, that one was super hardcore. I remember that one. It was a different one. It looked like it had like something in the cover. Yeah, it wasn't the hunting party. I remember. No? That wasn't one Living of my things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This one? I think so. Let me see. Um, I think so. I don't remember. We used to have what happened to all the CDs? We used to have a collection of CDs. I bought them all for somewhere. you. Somewhere. Yeah. I don't know. Somewhere. <laughs> my guy said, I'm a big fan of Jay Bug. Nice. He said, Drake deserves all of this. Not going to lie for mediocre music in the past three years. He's, you know, he's, it's not even mediocre music. He just said he chose a different lane. It's it's almost not even rap anymore. It's almost just like songs for women. You know what I mean? And it's like we can't relate anymore. Like when he first came in, man, with the young money, cash money. When they first came in, bro, I'm telling you, people used to because I, I was rapping around that time, and he used to tell me, "Damn, who's this new artist, Drake?" And I I don't know who like out of Canada, right out of Toronto, from Degrassi, and people used to tell me I sounded like him. They're like, "You like the Mexican Drake." But now I feel like I'm better than him now, mm -hmm. honestly, because like he, he kind of transitioned away from like making hits, like you know what I'm saying? Like, I know you say you love me, girl, with Gucci man. Oh my god, like the underground songs, man, like stunt hard. You know, I did it all for the throne, turn a chant to a throne. I'm a king, and that's why I stunt hard. Like who remembers those bangers, man? Absolute bangers with Lil Wayne and Young Money. They were phenomenal. Um, he said, my favorite song from Jay Bug is Let's Do It Again. Nice. Definitely fire. <clears throat> he said, can you sing us a full song of your live sometime? Of yours live sometime? I have to charge you. For that. <laughs> she I said, that would be awesome. You have a great voice. Thank you, brother. Yeah. Hey, one day, listen, if I go on tour, man, I'll make sure to give you free tickets, brother. But yeah, now if I start doing that on my uh, on my live streams, people are gonna be like, "We didn't come here for that." We I know because Lakers only yeah. <laughs> talk about Darvin Ham. <laughs> Facts, facts. But what I did one time, I kind of semi did that. I, I performed one of the new songs I had dropped right when we won the championship. I had dropped a song for it, and I remember I was just singing along with it. So yeah, I've done that. I mean, you never know. 
what type of mood your boy might be on. Uh, honestly, I would watch horror movies that have to do with occult stuff, but then I start looking too deep into it because of the satanic stuff is true. Yeah, bro. It's like, look, I'm, I'm in the music industry and I got stories that I never tell people. You know, I was like, I've had offers myself that I never talk about because I'm not trying to get, you know, I'm not trying to get destroyed out here. You feel me? I'm trying to live. But I'll tell you this. A lot of the stuff that you guys think is comp- conspiracy theories because they sound crazy are not. That's all I'll say. I'll leave it at that. And that could be a whole topic for a different podcast episode because I'm telling you, there's just so much deep stuff that goes into the cult. It's just like, uh-uh. Mm-hmm. Way too much. Yeah, way too much. Like you kind of have to do your own research for that. Yeah, you kind of have to do your own research. Like, I can't really give it too much game away because that's how you, you know, yeah. they're going to kill your boy if that happens. He said, Jay Boog is having a concert music in the park in downtown San Jose at Plaza, the, C- the Cesar Chavez. And I'm going to go. It's going to be fire. That's what's up, bro. That's definitely what's up. Dan, have we won a 3.30 Eastern time game? 12.30 PS Pacific time? Your, your time game all year? Makes me nervous. We're going to have to start, my friend. I, I I really don't remember if we won any. We usually struggle with the Sunday or Saturday early morning games. That's a fact. But I do actually, we went to a game, right? But when did that game start? Was it at three? Um, yeah. No, wasn't it early, like at twelve thirty? Oh yeah, it was twelve thirty. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Actually, the one me and my girl went to, the last one mm-hmm. that my boy Mookie sent us to, we won Isn't that game, that, and yeah, that was versus the Cavs. That's Easter time, three thirty. Yeah, yeah. So that would be twelve thirty, right? Yeah, that uh, twelve thirty Pacific. Pacific yeah. yeah. We actually to answer your question, T Money. Yes, it was the last time we played the Cavs. Uh, we were there Saturday morning. But mm-hmm. shout out to Mookie. Yep. Shout out. Yep. Yay. Thank you, Mookie. Yeah, fam. But I mean, so many great artists out there, man. A lot of them were inspirations to me. And um, what's uh, one female artist? Inspiration would, to me? Yeah. Uh, Lauren Hill. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Come on, man. Lauren Hill was insanely good. Like, mm-hmm. boy, you know you better. I thought you were gonna say me. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm, I'm playing. No, wow, no. look, look at her setting no, me up. No, she's a beast. I can't yeah. even. <laughs> yeah. La- Lauren Hill was this. You could. You got. Thought you were gonna say Selena. Selena was another one for sure. You know, <laughs> Selena was a musical inspiration for all of us, for sure. Um, Michael Jackson, but he's not a girl. But I'm just saying, Michael, <gasps> Michael Jackson was insane. Like, I think Michael Jackson is the goat of music. Period. Michael I can't. Jackson. I can't think of another. Artists yeah, that has such a big man, in, inspiration for many artists. Man, Michael Jackson, Chris bigger Brown, than, and you know, he's bigger. He's more influential than the Beatles. Michael mm-hmm. Jackson is the goat. Man, were Can't, you a fan of the Beatles? I did like the Beatles growing up. But as a were kid. You, would you say you were like a huge fan? I was. I mean, I like Hey Jude. Come I'll be on. honest. Like I wasn't like a super huge fan. Like a lot of people were. They were amazing, but they were out of my time, obviously. Mm-hmm. So I would listen to them casually. It's not like I had the CDs and shit. Um, but I do love oldies. I mean, that's a lot of our inspiration comes from that time, right? Mm-hmm. Um, Taylor Swift, hell uh, yeah! What, what's Taylor his name? Swift. My favorite oldies guy, um, um, Al Green. Al Green. Al Green is the goat of for me mm-hmm. of oldies, like mm-hmm. uh, the the Rightius Brothers. I mean, pff, the Turtles. Yo, I mean, pff, come on now. Uh, he said when. George Masvidal. Why are we talking about George Mas? This is a random name to throw out here. Man. <laughs> out of the blue, my man just said George Masvidal. Yeah, yeah. I think we were, we were over the, uh, the UFC yeah. topic. <laughs> I love it though, Matt. I love it. Um, I started watching Fallout. Oh my god, bro! So did oh, we. Oh well, well, we kind of got into it like the first episode, but then we were like, you know what? Let's yes. wait for you know your brother. I'm waiting for my family to watch it because yeah. it is great, bro. Fallout. <laughs> It just doesn't feel right to watch. It, yeah, when you're so watching good. something so epic, yeah, you can. We kind of put pause and say we gotta wait for the family because yeah. they're gonna want to watch. So we it. torture ourselves and <laughs> not watch it. <laughs> but what we have been watching, X Men '97. Yeah. If you Great. guys listen, if you're an X Men fan mm-hmm. or even not even an X Men fan, just a casual, mm-hmm. watch X Men '97. It's on Disney Plus. Mm-hmm. I'm sure, there's a lot of streaming websites you can watch it free on. But I'm telling you right now, X Men '97 is. Worth watching. It's bringing cartoons back. Yep. I hadn't watched a cartoon in years. I've been watching animes, mm-hmm. but not a cartoon. And X Men '97 is the revival of '90s cartoons that were so goaded, man. Mm-hmm. My mm-hmm. goodness. Worth watching. And yep. this last episode <coughs> yep. was amazing. Is it right? yeah, Taylor? Yeah. Is yeah. it yeah, Taylor? Taylor lives about two hours from Nashville. 
Mm -hmm. Nashville. I'll be honest. I I love music, but I I don't think I've ever heard a single Taylor Swift hit song. The first song that I remember. I know Katy Perry's hit songs like what. You're gonna hear me roar, all that catchy well, shit. I don't like Katy Perry, but I'm saying like at least she got catchy shit that I, I know. I put them in like in the same category. I know why she's famous for, but I don't know what she was famous for. What is Taylor Swift songs? famous I for? I remember one of her first songs was like Julia and Rome. Was it Romeo? But none and of that shit ever bumped in my radio. If they don't bump in DTLS radio, ones. she shouldn't be famous. Well, we don't bump Katy Perry either. <laughs> <laughs> but I'd rather bump her than it than. Uh, I'd than rather it. bump neither. My boy said I'm a big fan of Caitlyn Clark. She's yeah. great. She's great. However, my Sparks won't have an opportunity to, to uh, draft her, so irrelevant for me personally. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, my Sparks have to have the two overall and the fourth overall picks in the WNBA draft, and I'm looking forward to it, man. We should draft Camila and uh, and and Brinks. I think we should have the Twin Towers in the paint. The Twin Towers the Lakers don't want to have. So, um, yeah, that would be great for the Sparks. That would be must-see TV, especially since they lost NECA. I'll go make a... Um, I don't know why they fired the X Men '97 creator. That's a good question. I don't know. I I really don't know. I mean, he <laughs> they might have to rehire him after the ratings skyrocket mm-hmm. because that episode five. If you guys know, you know. If you guys mm-hmm. have not seen it, wait till you get the episode five. That one was a banger. So far, my two favorite episodes mm-hmm. were episode one when they introduced him mm-hmm. and episode five. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right, those two right there. Pff, he said, I live in Knoxville. She lives in Nashville. Her concerts are lit. Really? Okay, I'll take your word for it, T-Money. I will take your word for it. But personally, me, I know a lot about music, and I ain't, I don't remember a single, I can't name a single one of her songs. Doesn't, um... The one song I can remember was the one that uh, Russell Westbrook was lip syncing. Um, I forgot how, you, how it even went. Or was that a Beyonce song? I don't even remember. No. Oh, wait. It Beyonce, I think. Yeah, my boy said I watched a little anime last month. What's your favorite anime, brother? I'm a big Demon Slayer guy. We love Demon Slayer over here on this side. Oh, this guy has a whole list for Taylor Swift song. Look at this guy. He probably got her posters up on the wall and everything. Hey, man, I ain't judging you, bro. Go do your thing, brother. Shake, shake it off. (laughs) It's that one song. So those are his top five songs from Taylor Swift. Love Story, Teardrops on My Guitar, You Belong With Me, I Knew You Were Trouble, and Shake It Off. Mm-hmm. I don't know a single song that you just mentioned, brother. But hey, that's a me problem. Mm-hmm. Look What You Made Me Do. Is that another song? Or Look it... What You Made Me Do. Uh, how's it go? Damn, Something I can... like that. my girl knows No, I hear because it plays on the radio. <laughs> and, you know, I just... I don't, well, I don't listen to the radio. Phone. Don't lie. Yes, you do. <laughs> you sometimes put the radio. Man, when I don't feel like pairing my phone to the thing, it's like super <laughs> rare, though. You put the radio sometimes. <laughs> jacket time is important. Oh, oh, jacket time. Is that what you're saying? It's important? Nah, man. See, they, listen, we got to be playing for something for me to whip out the jacket for sure. Um, But I, I'll, I'll tell you what. We'll see. Okay. I still believe in this team. But we, I want us to be playing for a title before I can pull out the job. I don't want to use the last of his luck, man. It's like it, you only got three wishes with the genie, man. You don't want to rub the lamp, you know, to cut the to, to cut the line at the DMV or something. You feel me? <laughs> like, like if you only had three wishes with a genie, you only want to rub the lamp. You don't want to rub the lamp when you're horny. <laughs> that sounds or, so. <laughs> you you want to make sure you rub, rub the, lamp. the lamp too hard. Yeah. You know, Make sure you rub the lamp at the right time. You know? so just rub it extra careful. That's so you know, rub the lamp really good. Um, but yeah, chat. I think that's gonna wrap it up for us, man. Always a pleasure chopping it up with you guys, man. It, listen, tomorrow's gonna be a big day, so I'm gonna save a little bit of energy. I'm sure my girl's tired as well. How you feeling, baby? I'm okay. Oh, I'm feeling oh. good. I'm feeling good. Wait, wait, you want to go another hour? Is that but, what you're you know, me? I don't mind resting. Uh, okay, that's what I I'm just kidding. <laughs> that's what I thought, man. Taylor Swift and Travis. Kelsey would make Kelsey. <laughs> what? <laughs> Say what? Man, um, my boy, the last comment, he said, that's a good one, Dan. I watched it, this anime series called My Happy Marriage. It was a good oh, series. Oh, I've heard of that one, My Happy Marriage. For sure, yeah, we might get into something like that mm. for sure, man. But listen, uh, fellas, ladies and gentlemen, appreciate y'all tonight, man. Listen, it's been another good 
late night episode. Wait, one more question. We got an important question here. How's your boy doing? No, no, no. I was kidding. How's your girl doing? I'm doing great. Thank you for asking. Yeah, they, I'm doing amazing. You know, she's doing great, man. She got <laughs> she got the witness history tonight with UFC 300, man. So we're all doing great right now. Yeah, awesome fights. Yeah, for sure. But thank you guys thank so you, much, man. You. We appreciate y'all. This has been another great episode of Late Night with DTLF and Yessi. If you guys appreciate it, make sure to hit the like button. If you watch it live, definitely hit the like button. If you watch it later, then uh, you know tap in, hit the like button. Tell me what you guys thought. What was your favorite fight from UFC 300? This is this was memorable as hell. I think this was going to go down in the history books as the greatest UFC card of all time. Mm -hmm. But thank you guys again. Have a great rest of your night. Peace. Peace.